All right, good morning, everybody. I hope everybody had a great Father's Day weekend here. I know I did uh, here at home and, and uh, had all the boys, except for the one uh, who's still in Africa for another five weeks. Um, but he'll be finishing his two-year uh, two mission there, and we'll be going to pick him up here at the end of next month. So we're really excited for that. Otherwise, great Father's Day weekend, and I hope you did too. Uh, it is Monday morning. Uh, I am out the rest of this week um, with, with my boys uh, at a basketball camp. Um, and so I decided, okay, uh, I'll do a quick little video uh, that you can have here for the rest of this week, and then I'll be back on Thursday night. So I, um, depending upon when I get back, I'll do a Market Outlook video that night. Otherwise, uh, we'll be back on Friday for our normal schedule for of classes for our premium subscribers and Market Scholars, as well as um, the Market Outlook on Friday. So to give you a little something uh, to hold you over for the rest of this week, hopefully things don't go too haywire. Um, uh, between now and then but we'll talk about what's driving this uh, action over this past week it's been a crazy crazy market um, it's got some interesting patterns uh, some patterns that have been widely discussed we'll we'll bring up and some other patterns have not been very widely discussed that 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 might be a little bit of a red flag for us so we'll break all that down uh, in today's move kind of what's driving this market right now is you know it's a pretty big obvious trade but we'll, we'll break down what's driving what's really pushing the cues up more than anything and and why we're not seeing that more broadly and what that might spell for us going forward. Uh, and then we'll take a look at our trade idea in the, in the discretionary space, the consumer discretionary space that's uh, been pretty bearish itself, but might be bottoming. And we'll talk about how to trade a pattern like that. So let's go ahead and get started. Today is Monday, June 17th, 2024. This is the Market Outlook from MarketScholars.com. My name is David Settle. All right, before we get going too far, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, this icon here, the red subscribe button down below. Click the thumbs up icon to like our video. Comment on anything that stood out to you today. Join our website at marketscholars.com for free. Follow me on Twitter for more content between the videos and join our Market Outlook Facebook group that we've created. All right, if you're watching us on our blog, check out some of these other things over here on the right, including our Market Outlook Live video. Uh, come down to the bottom, click this uh, thumbs up, or this heart, excuse me, it opens up this tab, hit that like button there. Same thing here, click on this thumbs up icon, it opens up this tab, hit that like button there. Again, the more you do that, it helps get our content out to all of our followers on these platforms, so thank you. To those who do this day in and day out, it really helps us, that's why we always ask. Uh, those who don't, you can do right now while you're watching with one or two really easy clicks and help us get to our goal of 100 likes on our Market Outlook tweets. All right, let's start off taking a look at the S&P 500 with the market forecast indicator. Uh, again, we had a down day, but we were off the lows and we were actually up off the open. So that's why we had the open candle there. Uh, so we, f we, we just barely finished uh, at 50, about two points off of a, uh, having all five days this week produce new all-time highs, new all-time closing highs. Just, just a couple of points off. Otherwise, a very, very good week here. The intermediate line uh, in the upper reversal zone still has been all week. Uh, the near-term line has also been in bullish territory for most of the week, um, or for all the week, excuse me. It's been the upper upper reversal zone uh, for most of the week. Uh, and then you can see the momentum line dropping uh, because of the smaller ranges. Uh, you can see the range today or Friday was only 28 and a half points compared to an average of 48 points. So the range really dropping off, bringing that momentum line down. But because we finished off the lows, the momentum line stayed out of the reversal zone. So no uh, intermediate confirmation signal there uh, as a result. But it's in bearish territory and you expect, as you can see, when you get into bearish territory at any level, you tend to bounce back up. So don't be surprised if we get a little bit of a bounce up here this week, uh, sometime over the course of this week. Uh, for, to get that momentum line back into bullish territory, as you can see, it fluctuates from bearish to bullish pretty quickly. The uh, the unless we you know, obviously go into a more significant near term or even an intermediate decline, which is as of right now unlikely. We are more than two and a half percent up above the uh, moving average. If you take a look at the Nasdaq 100, uh, and then we'll look at the other two. The Nasdaq 100, you can see, uh, did get a new closing high. Uh, so the Nasdaq 100 did get uh, all five new um, uh, all-time high closes uh, over the course of the week. So we went from 576 to 19659. It's so about a 100-point gain there. The, in, the intermediate and near-term lines up at extreme levels above the 90th percentile. It's a very good move there. 
And of course, again, momentum line dropping only because of the smaller ranges over the last couple of days. Otherwise, you know, very, very good move. Um, we had those two back-to-back -back clusters this week. Uh, we're five, over 5% 5 above the 30-day moving average, which is the 89th percentile. So we're just a little bit off of getting a, a um, let's see here, let me zoom out so we can see, there we go. So just, there's the peak that we had in November, we're a little bit higher. Otherwise, we're that close to getting a green dot down here of being, you know, in the top 10% above, or decile, top decile uh, above the 30-day uh, moving average over the course, in this case, the past year. So good move there. Uh, now we look at the Dow Jones and the Russell, which have been underperforming. Your Dow Jones, the intermediate line has crossed back down below its market sentiment line and back slightly into bearish territory. So much different picture there than what we're seeing on the S&P and the, and the uh, NASDAQ, or the Russell, or the S&P and the NASDAQ, excuse me. The near-term line also crossing below the intermediate line. So both those, because they're all between the reversal zones, so any crossovers up and down can be either bullish or bearish, respectively. Uh, so, so right now, they're both showing kind of weak bearish. I mean, neither one of them are strongly bearish. They're in bearish territory, but they're not in the reversal zone. So we're not too, not too concerned about that. You have dark pink shading because of the decline in the intermediate line below the 50th percentile. Uh, but you are still below a rising moving average. So it's a yellow line instead of being red. So we don't have that combination of dark pink shading and a red line quite yet. You got the bull tag. We're still pretty much hovering around uh, the bull tag. So we haven't broken down, uh, nor have we bounced back up yet. Um, because remember, bull tags tend to be inflection points uh, for the markets. They're also 2000. Uh, also a lot more bearish. Its intermediate line has also crossed back down below its market sentiment for the first time uh, during this cycle. The uh, near-term line has crossed back down after crossing above it for the first time during this cycle. Uh, it has crossed back down below us, back into bearish territory, and you're over you're over two and a half percent below. Uh, you're in fact you're in the bottom two, bottom twenty percent. So you're. You know, pretty. You know, we haven't been below the moving average uh, for uh, for that long. Mostly over here, but especially over here, and, and here we are again now below it just by a little bit. And we do have dark pink shading and a red line uh, for the Russell 2000. So a much much different picture when you don't have Nvidia uh, in in your index. Uh, and for the Russell, you also don't have Apple and Microsoft either. Um, the Dow does have those other two, but they don't have the same weighting in the Dow as they do in the S&P because it's a price weighted average instead of a, a market cap weighted average. So uh, you can see why those, those, these two indexes would be suffering more uh, than, um, than the S&P and especially the NASDAQ 100 where they make up a, a large percentage of those particular indexes. Here is the... Uh, the weekly market forecast, very strong intermediate line, near-term line up to very strong bullish levels. The momentum line still at pretty strong bullish levels too. I mean, that's how close we came to another cluster uh, on the S&P 500 on the weekly version. We're 8% above the moving average, so pretty strong chart there. Uh, the NASDAQ 100 did get a cluster uh, over the course of this week, so very strong move higher. This is, you know, what, the uh, fourth cluster since the last bull tag and the fifth cluster since we turned bullish uh, on this trend. So it's good to get a cluster when you're very first starting, when the intermediate line uh, has, has either just crossed or has just barely, you know, is, is right close to the crossing above the 80th percentile. Um, we got one over here as well after the bull tag. Uh, and now we're, you know, getting quite a few clusters. The near term, the NASDAQ is pretty strongly bullish here, 11% above uh, the moving average. Uh, you look at the Dow Jones, again, you see a different picture, right? We've been down uh, for the past four weeks, three of the past four weeks, and barely up that third. Um, the intermediate line is dropping, but at least it's still in the reversal zone. Your uh, near-term line is still in the process of bouncing from bearish territory. So that's actually a pretty decent sign for the Dow, leading to the potential for a good week here. And then you can see your Russell 2000 getting, it doesn't have light pink shading, uh, but you can see the yellow line as we barely cross a little bit below uh, that moving average there. At least we will be below the moving average at the open. Um, we'll see if it stays yellow by the end of the week. Uh, the near-term line and momentum line are very strongly bearish. 
um, because of the move off of the high of the week. Um, so again, that level of bearishness in the near term would suggest uh, that the intermediate line is going to make a run out of the reversal zone. And again, pink shading in the yellow line, if we end up getting that by the end of this week, because um, it could happen depending upon how low we go. But we could get light pink shading in the yellow line. That would be, um, again, the uh, bull tags that typically lead to you know, the intermediate declines on this chart, which would typically be kind of corrective moves more than just a pullback. The pullbacks are kind of these like, you know, where you're still above the 30 week moving average, the corrections tend to get below uh, the 30 week moving average. As you can see COVID here and then 2022 and, and even last year in 2023, we had a correction in the Russell, a very shallow one, but a correction in the Russell that we did not get in the other uh, large cap indexes. In fact, we had oversold clusters on the weekly chart um, there last summer, and obviously in the S and P 500, we did not uh, get oversold. We got a bull tag, um, but we did not get an oversold cluster. The intermediate line didn't even get into the lower half of the chart. Uh, got below the market sentiment line, but didn't get into the lower half of the chart before bouncing back up there the week of Halloween, and and we're obviously back, been riding higher ever since. All right, let's take a look at the other weekly chart that we have here. You can see the nice little rally. Uh, we're, st we're in the top 10% now in terms of how far above the uh, 30, uh, the 40 week exponential moving average, which is our proxy for the 200 day, uh, where the, the size of the candle is a pretty good size above its three week average. Uh, so a good strong move there. Again, that's not the case for the Dow as the Dow has been showing uh, some weakness and the same thing with the Russell. Uh, also showing some weakness below the 10 week that's falling PPO is falling the candle size is negative not too largely negative but it's it's negative there so you can kind of see the discrepancy between the major indexes you see here two three green arrows over here not three green arrows over here in fact you're pretty darn close to three red arrows on the Russell 2000 you have a red line there uh, on IWM and the Dow is got one red arrow or two excuse me you're below the moving average too and the stochastics is setting up for a potential phantom arrow you can see the the s p and the nasdaq the stochastics is well in the reversal zone so no phantom arrows there the phantom arrows come when you turn over without being in the reversal zone either direction you turn over without being in the reversal zone so like these would be phantom arrows these two wouldn't be because they are coming out of the reversal zones when you get them tend to be uh, these tend to be, um, can be more shallow, as you can tell. Uh, but obviously, if you continue below these lows, you know, a phantom arrow can be pretty bearish, whereas a red arrow up here coming out of the reversal zone, you know, can be, can usually just lead to a slight little pullback, right? Um, kind of like what we saw here. And then you got a strong bullish uh, phantom green arrow, and you're back to three green arrows. So that's kind of what we like to see. This is the pattern that we like to see that we're just not getting on the Dow or the Russell 2000. Uh, you're well above moving averages on the S&P 500 and well above these. MACD, you can see, is you know forming a lower high point right now uh, with the higher highs. Uh, of course, your, your diamonds are trading below that point of control, uh, which is pretty high up there. So your, your point of control on the S&P is pretty low. It's at the bottom of the 52-week range, way down there. That's not the case for the diamonds. The diamonds, the point of control is way up here. Um, so you're really, really top heavy on the diamonds. And we've seen this before. Um, again, the path of least resistance right now because of being below uh, the uh, point of control is to the downside. And you are below the eight and 17. They're both below the 30. Um, the MACD and stochastics are at bearish levels. The same thing with the Russell, though it is still slightly above its point of control so you do have some support um, there with the 200 day and the point of control being below uh, the Russell you can see the volume picking up down there on the declines uh, for the Russell 2000 let's take a look at the uh, DMI uh, for uh, the S&P good strong bullish pattern here up above 25 on the positive well below 20 on the negative so you have a rising ADX IWM does not show that your ADX is very low um, and both your positive and your negative are above 25 uh, with the negative being higher no surprise uh, there 
uh, with the decline we've had in the last couple of days. Uh, looking at the RSI and the CCI, very strong bullish levels for the S&P 500. Uh, not so strong bullish levels. In fact, you could argue the opposite for the Russell 2000. Um, you know, down below minus 150 on the CCI and and uh, below 50 and, and close to being below 40 on the uh, RSI. Uh, so much different perspective here. When you, again, when you don't have Nvidia in the chart. In fact, well, we'll take a look at this chart here in just a second. Let's look at the uh, Ichimoku cloud again. Well above the cloud, you have a mature trend on the S&P 500. Uh, that's not the case on the diamonds. You have you don't even have a weak trend anymore on the diamonds and you're in the cloud there floating with being below the cloud. You have a negative rate of change. Uh, IWM also has a negative rate of change. You are below slightly below the cloud. And again, you don't you have the beginning actually of a weak bearish trend developing on the Russell 2000. Uh, if you look at the Bollinger Bands and the uh, Keltner Channel, um, again, we are above the Keltner Channel uh, on the S&P 500. You have rising momentum. Uh, you have the bands themselves are back outside the Keltners after being briefly inside them with the red dots there. Uh, again, flirting with that upper Bollinger Band as well. Very strong levels uh, for the S&P. Again, not the case for the Diamonds. You have bearish momentum down there. You're in the lower half of the range. Uh, but your range is falling. Uh, IWM, uh, you are flirting. You're in the lowest quartile of the bandwidth. It's actually increasing uh, with negative momentum down there. And, and your band is still inside the Keltner channel. So still looking for a squeeze play to break out uh, of there. As now let's take a look at the intraday chart. Uh, as you can see, you know, we did get... You know, again, a kind of an inside day here on Friday, inside of the day on Thursday, which is kind of similar range. But all three days above, um, you know, the last week's high and, and breaking out after uh, the Wednesday. I'm holding the breakout on Wednesday, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, the Arun indicator is coming back down after getting a one touch on the negative indicator. Uh, that's not the case for the diamonds. The diamonds, oh, excuse me, the diamonds... Um, has the one touch as well it's a little different a lot a lot higher but you are in the lower half you did get a lower high and a lower low and you are still inside of last week's range uh we didn't break out to the upside see we did we got up to the we did break up to the high of last week and then worked our way down here um that's the diamonds iwm uh, did get a new four-week low point so and have been for a while here getting new four-week lows there's the breakout Again, up to the high of last week, but we ended up closing below last week's low. So, you know, remember the S&P closed up above last week's high point. IWM closing below last week's low point. So, you know, much different scenario with new four-week lows. Um, you can see now we can look at the stochastics chart. The S&P very strongly bullish here. The Russell 2000 about the about pretty much the opposite. Uh, and its average, 20-day uh, average of this blue line is now in the lower half of the chart itself. Even your Dow Jones Industrial Average is in bearish territory, and its average has also fallen into the lower half of the chart. So much, much different story here for the more of the broader indexes, uh, whereas the S&P is in the NASDAQ. NASDAQ 100 especially is pretty narrow, but the S&P is narrowing. Um, it's becoming more and more of a narrow index, despite having 500 companies. Um, most of those 500 companies have a very, very marginal effect on the broader index and, and, its, and its overall moves um, because of the market cap weighting. All right. Uh, obviously, the volume and the you saw the trading range has been getting smaller. Um, let's see. Let's go to this chart first. But the volume has also been getting a lot uh, pretty small. Um, you know, we had one day on Wednesday on the breakout move, uh, but it's been down below average last couple of days. So then... You know, at 40 million and, and a trading range of three points, uh, three points is well below. You know, it's off the charts here for the 52-week range, and then the volume below, well below the average is already pretty low too. Um, so your ATR, relative ATR, is still at good level. So we still have bullish potential here. Again, once you get below 80 percent or 0.8 percent, um, you know, you tend to uh, to start to increase on the range and and an increase on the range coincides generally with some volatility uh, in the index <clears throat> and especially again with volume so low an increase in the range and volumes would definitely be you know a sign of, of an increase in volatility um, but volatility itself remains very very low 
um, closing the week uh, here just above uh, 12 and a half. Uh, 12 and a half here we're up so far today. As always on Mondays, we're up. Um, but closing there at 12 and a half, closing at the 85% mark. Uh, your VVIX jumped up on Friday, or excuse me, jumped up to 83.2. This is, let me just make sure. I believe we closed on Friday below 83.2, but let me check on that. But yeah, so this is to, oh no, Friday we did jump up to uh, 83. So a little bit of a jump higher in the VVIX to close off the week. Um, because remember, being below anything below 80 is extreme. And you can see the jump up, even if the VIX itself didn't jump up that much, uh, has brought the, again, the two week correlation down to, uh, to weak positive levels. Not negative, um, but weak positive. Again, anytime you go negative, it tends to be followed by an increase in both of these. And we've been trying to, you know, it's been trying to figure that out. You had a little bit of an increase here a couple of weeks ago, and we'll see if that plays out to more of an increase, which is more typical uh, over the course of the next so many weeks. And if we take a look at the uh, what's driving this action, you can see IWM has actually been down over the past three months now. It's got a negative return for three months, uh, but that hasn't stopped a 10% gain in the queues. Again, that is pretty much what's been driving this action. The dollar's been up over the past three months. Uh, bonds have been, bond yields have been mostly up. There's a little bit of a drop here lately. In fact, if you look at just this week, um, here, let's go to uh, this past week here. So we'll go from June. 10th to the 14th so bond yields were really down this week and and of course that hasn't i mean that that didn't really help iwm very much which generally it does it did early in the week but not the last couple of days finishing the week with a loss uh developed markets really finishing the week with a loss down four percent we'll look at that here in just a second um but bond but the, the queues were up three and a half percent for the week so a very good week here uh, of course, everything rising on Wednesday at the open, um, but then the queues held its Wednesday gains. The IWM actually dropped pretty sharply uh, from those Wednesday highs. Commodities ended up, uh, again, they rallied too on that risk appetite move. They were already bullish over the course of the week. They rallied and then held most of those gains after that rally. And you can see the dollar started the week off. It, it was down on Wednesday when everything rallied. The dollar was down. But then the dollar rebounded over the course of the next couple of days, finishing the week with a good move to the upside. So if you take a look at uh, like the uh, bonds, the bonds had a really good week, breaking above its 200-day moving average, breaking above the point of control. You know, a good strong move to the upside. Um, it had a good breakout here on the on its weekly chart above the 50-week moving average. Uh, we've broken out here before, uh, so now we need to see if we're going to actually hold this breakout. If we're going to break, uh, if we're going to have a kind of a fake out move back below these moving averages, so we'll see how we we um, move over the course of this week. I mean, this is it's been the strongest move over the over the calendar year to the upside, even though we had some pretty big size moves uh, last um, last calendar year. If you look at the weekly chart here um, for TLT. Again, you can see um, pretty good move here, three over 3%, biggest move since we started 2024, but we had like four 3% gains or higher uh, at the end of last year. So good move to the upside after gapping down, you know, a half a percent to start the week. And it looks like we're going to gap down a little bit here this morning to start this week. Um, and and I, I don't think that the TLT that this is going to hold. Um, if you look at, give me one second here. So if you look at the 10 year yield, um, you know, had a pretty, uh, you know, it's up today and, and I expect it will go up for the most of this week. Um, but it had a pretty bad week last week, closing below the 200 day moving average, closing all the way down to 4.2% after what starting the week here, um, finishing last week at 44.4.43 and then starting on Monday getting up to 4.47 essentially. So we went from 4.47 to finishing the week at 4.21. So a big drop uh, in the 10-year yield. Um, and, and again, we'll see, we've been below the 200-week moving average or 200-day moving average before. Um, now we are well below the 50-day where we weren't as below the 50-day that time. We're well below it now. In fact, we're probably more below the 50-day moving average now than we've been for a while, uh, if you compare this the 50 day moving average. Um, yeah, we it's for the for most of this year, 
uh, since over here when we were well below the 50 day. So we'll see how much this holds. I don't expect it will hold very much. As you can see, we're already up today, just like we were last Monday. It's a pattern on Mondays. Um, uh, the dollar index is also a really important um, factor for, uh, also a really important factor for this, for risk appetite, and it's kind of flat today so far. Um, but again, last week had a very good week above all these moving averages. Again, the eight and 17 day has crossed below, above, excuse me, the 30 day moving average. So it's a good sign uh, for, for a trend to develop to the upside. Uh, so when you look at the market forecast here for uh, the dollar index, uh, you can see we're back to dark green shading. We got a bear tag and we're back to, and we've, we've built on it, right? And we're back to dark green shading in the, in the green line and we're intermediate lines almost back up above um, the market sentiment line. If you look at TNX, um, again, we've been dark pink shading in a red line. We got a cluster on Friday. Um, the, you know, now you have the uh, momentum and near term lines rising and we'll see how much they rise this week. They, they had a pretty good end last week, beginning, you know, last, the last Friday and, and then this past Monday, um, you know, brought, the, brought both these levels up, but then it failed at the 30 and now we're a lot further below the 30 now and we'll see if we, you know, how much this holds and if we get back up above that 200 day moving average. And of course, commodities will have a big say in that. Uh, and commodities had a good week last week in general, down a little bit here today, but had a good week uh, for the most part last week. And you can see getting that bear tag there. Uh, crude oil especially had a pretty good week last week. Um, there's crude oil's week last week and it's up a little bit more today. Now that's a big factor, right? If crude oil continues to rise, then that will put some pressure on uh, bonds and cause yields to rise, uh, cause yields to rise. And of course, rising yields, stronger dollar, has been and and when and the third component here at times has been commodities. Those three things rising has been uh, kind of the problem uh, for and of course the problem has been the breadth. It continues to be the breadth. Um, when you look at these breadth indicators, there's been a lot of chatter about it over the weekend. The breadth indicators have been absolutely horrible. Here's the uh, number of stocks above the 50-day moving average trading back down to 200. So that's the 40% range. Anything below 200 is pretty bearish. Um, so we're, we're flirting with that again, getting back below 200 there. The number of new highs and new lows uh, has dropped on Friday, uh, dropping down to, to minus 200. So it's a pretty significant negative level, um, well below the minus 100 level. So you know that's a sign of really, really bad breadth. Um, the, uh, the, this ratio of stocks above the 250 are, is still above its moving average, which tends to be bearish when you're above a rising moving average. We haven't seen the brunt of that bearishness yet, um, but it tends to be bearish there. Uh, and then your skew, we talked about last week before that it was above uh, 140. Well, last week it finished above 160. I mean, this is the highest level since back over here. That Again, that, that means that there's a lot of demand for fat tail risk, for, for large size moves to the downside. Um, when the VIX is higher, you know, the market's price, you know, the market's worried about kind of this more, inter, you know, the intermediate moves to the downside. But this is a fat tail risk. And so, so not only, I mean, the moving average itself, the 20 day average is almost to about, to, is that 147? That's a really high level just in and of itself, uh, higher than where we were over here. About, well, about the same as where we were uh, when we had this intermediate decline last summer. Uh, but but 162 is the highest level we've had uh, since the one touch over here at the end of 2023 during the convergence period. Uh, and then of course, what we saw last in 2021 before we had our 2022 correction. So big jump higher in skew. Uh, that is not necessarily the best thing uh, that we wanna see. And you can see as well, when you look at like the McClellan oscillator uh, over the course of this past week has been pretty negative. Um, you know, so far today, it's, you know, we take it with a grain of salt, we're at minus 64. Remember anything below minus 35 is trending levels. Uh, on Friday, we finished at, at minus 53. So pretty bearish uh, breadth, even if we're still kind of relatively positive up to the upside, very, very bearish breadth. In fact, the summation index now is well below 500, well below 500. And you're gonna be flirting with dropping below two, a zero which again is bearish when you're dropping below zero, uh, when you have the summation below zero here. So um, 
you can see it gets below zero during all these intermediate declines and and we're flirting with that again so you know, relatively bad breadth um, uh, and money flow has not been very positive either um, you know we, we briefly got up above we're, we're barely in fact now we're barely up above um, the uh, peak even if again we're well up above it on the price and we're forming a divergence on the actual oscillator the money flow index itself so money flow and breadth uh, continues to be a, a, a really big red flag uh, for the markets here and then when you look at like the sector rotation uh, I've, I've shared this chart a few weeks ago where XLK was the only chart uh, that was in the um, leading category well here it is again the only chart so was, let's see here let me just if I can find where it was so it was like right in this range right where XLK for a while here was the only one and I that's when I kind of tweeted that chart XLC was the only one in the leading XLC ended up getting into the leading category and XLK fell out so XLC was the only one and then you know then you had all these like XL uh, all the safety trades were rising and improving uh, including uh, and, and with discretionary as well but then they've all turned lower and XLK is the only one now up in fact every other sector has been losing um, momentum every other sector has been losing momentum everything's dropping some to the left some straight down some a little bit to the right but every sector is dropping in momentum uh, except for uh, including XLC now almost in the red two except for XLK which is so I mean again this is we have just a very very small portion of the index uh, leading and here is XLK itself uh, and what it's doing over the past uh, five days and you can kind of see which uh, companies are leading the way higher if I were to uh, throw on um, I don't know if it'll let me do um, all of these at the same time you know it won't so here's Nvidia um, there is Apple right moving up to the right and then of course Microsoft is right there um, kind of flirting with being in the red zone but those are your three biggest companies and, and this and, and a lot of these chip stocks are in here too um, you know that's kind of what's leading this market uh, and it's really the only thing that's leading this market higher XLK uh, when you look at it this way XL you can see XLE there but XLK is just like strong like it's gone pretty parabolic here in fact when you look at it on this chart so you can see all the other indicators here so look at it relative to SPY and here let's just zoom in a little bit uh, to the past year um, you can see how strong the move has been where the RSI is is parabolic uh, the PPO the PPI uh, PPO excuse me is parabolic uh, the CCI had gotten above 200 already it's gone parabolic um, the uh, RS uh, the DMI has gone parabolic relatively again relatively speaking so very very strong moves you see that as well in the Q's relative to IWM which is you know again getting all-time highs uh, every day including today so far RSI very extreme I mean this and PPO very extreme the uh, RS the DMI excuse me very extreme uh, everything just very very extreme on the on how the Q's have been performing relative to its uh, to these other indexes and it's all been pretty much XLK uh, and how it's been doing and if you look at like industrials for an example industrials which is another cyclical area look how much has been lagging the market it's been act getting absolutely destroyed uh, on a relative basis even if it's not necessarily dropping on an absolute basis it's getting destroyed on a relative basis so here it is uh, relative to the SPY um, RSI has just been very bearish look at that big drop there the PPO is at extreme levels. I mean, just zoom out so you can see some um, context on this move and just how big it is. Just a big, big drop here. Um, again, it outperformed during the, the correction of 2022, but it really dropped during COVID. And, you know, there are periods where it just really underperforms. And this is probably, you know, outside of COVID, this has been the period where it's underperformed the most uh, there. So that's XLI. And uh, you can look at like, uh, XLB too. This is a kind of another economic growth sensitive, right? Because these sectors, you know, again, fuel uh, economic expansion uh, with in terms of industrial production. I mean, look at that. I mean, it's just been on this big sharp decline and continues to be. And 
And so it's, it's been a technology race and it's been a very a niche area of the technology race. And that's, this is why the breath has been so bad and this is why there's concern, right? There's, there's legitimate concern uh, for fat tail risk in the market if uh, there's any kind of rotation as there always is, right? Because you can see XLK doesn't stay up um, at these levels forever. Uh, it will rotate, right? it always does rotate, it's a sector rotation, it will rotate uh, down uh, to the left itself uh, at some point in time, there's the, week, there's the weekly chart, here's the daily, so it will rotate down to the left at some point like everything else has been doing right now, uh, so the question will be, um, you know, when and how would that look like again, you know, it's most parabolic move that it's had here in a while, when will it when will it give up give up these gains and start to rotate lower and how will the market be impacted uh, when that happens and you would expect it wouldn't be very positive right because you know like like i said in my uh, classes over the course of this last week um, those companies microsoft nvidia apple they will not be immune uh, to any kind of intermediate decline in the markets in fact they will be the leaders of that intermediate decline uh, when if and when um, that does happen all right for today's trade idea uh, we took a look at target let's take a look at target here or at least this was friday's trade idea uh, we target's been in the bearish decline uh, here let's take a look at its market forecast first uh, it's been in the bearish decline here you can see it's got dark pink shading and a red line uh, it's the intermediate lines in the reversal zone now it's below its market sentiment um, but you also see after getting this uh, cluster on earnings We've, we've been up and down retesting that level, but we haven't broken through that level, kind of holding it for some support, potential kind of double bottom uh, setting up in that area. If you look at its weekly chart, obviously you've been in some bearish trends. Um, again, same thing, you've got, uh, you're below the 40 week moving average now, and even this week so far today, this morning, uh, you've got a lower close, how can you actually close, even if you don't quite have a lower low point yet. <clears throat> If you look at the uh, three green arrow chart, let's look at this one. Obviously, you have three red arrows. <clears throat> you are below the moving average. MACD is down. Stochastics is down um, on all of those. Looking at its DMI, <clears throat> here's the DMI uh, for target. You can see it's got a negative level, uh, pretty strong negative level there. Um, if you look at its RSI and its CCI, also at bearish levels too. Uh, but not strongly bearish, but below 40, um, was below minus 150 down there. Uh, looking at its Ichimoku cloud and the trend, you had a pretty decent mature trend already. And that's kind of why it's it's kind of hard to chase this to the downside when it's already been as mature as it is, ready to change, is already down there. And, I, and again, I like the double bottom and I like the uh, setup here um, when you look at the Bollinger Bands where we are here. <clears throat> relative to the Bollinger Bands, you can see the point of control is down here at the bottom. Um, you know, we're well below moving averages. In fact, we're kind of sitting on the lower Bollinger Band and the lower Keltner Channel. The bands themselves are outside the Keltner Channel, but the band width is dropping pretty sharply. So I want to take advantage of that. And, and the way we did that is by doing an iron condor trade uh, for July expiration, selling the uh, low 20 delta, so 135 there. 150 up here, buying one strike away for both. Uh, position sizing for the full position size, since we've already been through earnings, there's where my break evens are. So, um, well, actually, if I were to set my size to break even, oops, set slices to break even, and then set those slices onto the chart, uh, you can kind of see where that is. So, I, I can go back up and retest the moving average and be just fine. We've done that a couple of times and failed. Uh, and if I go down to the bottom, you can see that. Um, we have the point of control down there um, as a support on the downside and we're right, sitting right on the 200 day moving average. Uh, so I like the setup here. Not a whole lot of downside, but all the indicators are bearer. So I don't think there's a lot of upside either. And if there is, you do have some resistance up in this area um, and some strong support here down below the 200 day moving average. So assuming the bandwidth continues to decline and we kind of stay around this area, this volume node, then that's how we make our money on this trade. All right, that does it for today. You've heard from me now, and I want to hear from you. Use that link popping out in the top right corner of your screen that takes you to our Market Outlook forum. Open up any new thread with any questions or comments you have. Reply to anybody else's thread, and let's keep this conversation going in between videos. Again, thank you very much for watching. Remember, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that thumbs up icon. Comment on the video. Join us at marketscholars.com for free. Follow and like me on Twitter and Facebook as well. Uh, have a great rest of your week, everybody. I'll be back on Friday. 
Uh, so this will kind of give you an idea for the rest of the week, and then we'll take a look on Friday uh, how the week went uh, for the upcoming weekend. So thanks again. Have a great rest of your week, everybody, and we'll see you all then.